Hi, my name is Ethan Rido, and I'm an engineer here at Desktop Metal. Today, we're going to be taking a detailed look at the Studio System Debinder. In our previous videos, we did a quick overview of the entire Studio System and took a detailed look at both Fabricate and the printer. If you haven't already seen those videos, I encourage you to go back and watch those first because they're going to give you a really good understanding of how the entire system works. So we've been walking through the process of fabricating a gear with the Studio System, and when we last left off, we had just gotten our part printing. Well, the part has now been successfully printed, and we're ready to move on to the debinding step. Once the part comes off the printer, it's what we call a green part. A green part is simply a combination of both metal powder and binder. The binder is necessary for the printing process, but we're going to want to remove most of it before we go to sindering. That's where the debinding step comes into play. The debinding step starts in the software, so let's go ahead and jump back into Fabricate. Okay, now that we're back inside of Fabricate, we're going to set up our debinding job. Fabricate makes debinding parts easy. The first thing I'm going to do is select our printed part and create a job. The desktop metal debinder is designed for batch processing, allowing us to debind many printed parts all at once. So in addition to this part that we just printed, I'm going to add a few more parts that we previously printed to our debind cycle. You can see that Fabricate is automatically prompting me as to which shelves to put each part on. I can even click this 3D viewer and see a 3D rendering of where each of these parts should go. The software takes the guesswork out of debinding by showing us optimal part locations for the quickest and most effective debind cycle. It's also worth noting here that the debind cycle time is set based on which part of the cycle will take the longest time to debind. Once I've selected all my parts, Fabricate will generate the debind instructions automatically. Now I'll just head up here to this menu, select my debinder, and then hit start. All right, so now we're over here with our debinder. Fabricate's already automatically calculated all of the debind times, as well as told us exactly where to place our parts on the trays. This means all that's left to do is place our tray into the debinding tank. You may notice that I'm not wearing any personal protective equipment. The Desktop Metal Studio Debinder is the world's only office-friendly solvent debinder. This means the parts go into the debinder dry, and they come out of the debinder dry. The process chamber is completely sealed, meaning I'm never exposed to any chemicals while we're debinding our parts. In addition, the system does not require any extra ventilation or require you to clean out any of that gunky leftover binder. Instead, the fluid is distilled, recycled, and all that binder that's removed from your parts is simply stored in a canister below. When the canister is full, our UI will prompt us and we'll simply just replace it. Let's get these parts debinding. Once your parts are placed into the debinder, just close the lid and seal the latches. When the parts are fully debound and dried for sintering, we'll get a notification that the cycle is complete. So we're going to go ahead and let our debinder do its job, and you can join me here for our next video, where we're going to go over the final step of the studio system process, sintering. In the meantime, be sure to head over to desktopmetal.com for more information.